this evening. First, a shocking murder in Adventure Esukubu Coast. Police are investigating the fatal shooting of a 61-year-old businessman in his own home. We'll bring you the latest on this unfolding tragedy. Next, in Georgetown, two police officers are under close arrest after a high-speed chase ends with a Venezuelan woman being shot. We'll have the details of the investigation into this alarming incident. Then, Guyana gears up for its fourth energy conference and supply chain expo, where industry leaders will gather to discuss the future of energy, local content, and technological innovations. Stay tuned for the full report. Meanwhile, small businesses in Guyana get a major boost with the launch of a new resource center in Georgetown. Find out how this initiative is helping entrepreneurs thrive in a competitive market. And in Sudan, heavy rains and floods are wreaking havoc, with over 177 lives lost and more than 100,000 displaced. How ongoing conflict is hampering relief efforts. These stories and more are coming up on tonight's broadcast. Welcome to this broadcast of Channel 2's Headline News Update for September 3rd, 2024. I am Baby Backus. Thank you for joining us. First up, ranks of the Ghana Police Force is investigating the alleged murder of a 61-year-old businessman at Adventure Esukubu Coast on Monday, September 2nd. The alleged murder was committed on Gantage of Adventure Esukubu Coast by a person or persons unknown. Inquiries disclosed that the now deceased lived with his 47-year-old wife and 30-year-old daughter. According to the wife of the deceased, Drupati Ragobar, she and her husband were awoken by a noise and she remained in bed while Gantaj went to the hallway. The woman said she heard about four gunshots and then a shout for thief. She told detectives that she went outside to the bathroom area where she saw her husband lying in a pool of blood with what appeared to be a gunshot wound to his chest. The deceased was rushed to the Saudi hospital where he was pronounced dead on arrival by a doctor. Upon the arrival of the police, the scene was processed. It is suspected that the deceased was shot from outside through a louver window connected to the washroom by a gunman or gunmen who failed to gain entry into the home. Investigation into this fatal incident is on. In other news, two Ghana police force officers are under close arrest after being investigated for shooting a female Venezuelan in her buttocks at Lime Street work in Ross Georgetown on Monday, September 2nd. According to a police report, around 2 p.m. yesterday, the two ranks from the Brick Dam Police Station Impact Base Anti-Crime Patrol were on duty when they attempted to stop a tinted vehicle to carry out a search based on information they had received. The driver of the car refused to stop and sped away, so the ranks opened fire while chasing it. Following the incident, a 28-year-old female Venezuelan bystander was shot in the buttocks on the left side. She is currently in the Georgian Public Hospital Accident and Emergency Unit awaiting surgery. The ranks involved are under close arrest. The Office of the Professional Responsibility is currently conducting that investigation. On a different note, the Small Business Bureau has launched a new resource center in Georgetown to support small businesses in Guyana. Located at the SBB's head office in the Penitence, the center offers entrepreneurs access to essential resources, such as help with business registration, taxes, insurance, and customs. Chief Executive Officer Mohamed Ibrahim explained that the center provides free services, including document printing and personalized business advice. Entrepreneurs can schedule time to use these services and get guidance from a dedicated advisor. The SBB is also creating a database to better understand and meet the needs of small businesses and continue to offer training programs that have already helped over 1,000 businesses. The Bureau aims to support business growth through various initiatives, including access to finance and specialized programs like the Green Business Technology Fund, and Youth Entrepreneur Skill Training Program. Stick around when we return. 2025 Energy Expo to feature exciting activities and digital innovations. And Ghana's oil and gas industry expanded by 67.1%.
GCOM is currently conducting a national registration exercise. Who can register? Anyone who will be 14 years or older by December 31, 2024, and is a Guyanese citizen by birth, descent, naturalization, or is a citizen from a Commonwealth country living in Guyana for one year or more. Where to apply for registration? You are required to visit the registration office that is responsible for the registration of persons in your area of residence to apply for registration. Office hours, Monday to Thursday, 8 to 12 hours, 13 hours to 16 hours 30, and Friday from 8 to 12 hours and 13 to 15 hours 30. The offices will be closed on weekends and holidays. This registration exercise will end on November 29, 2024. For further information, contact GCOM on 2250-2779 or visit the website www.gcom.org.gy. Who's the problem, Granny? I want money for bar for those surgery. I was dancing and I fall and fracture my hip. If you need some quick money, you should check Lenders Jewelry and Pawn Shop. Lenders Jewelry and Pawn Shop, Lot 238 South Road Border, Georgetown. Get jewelry made to order in just 72 hours. We also accept vehicles. Lenders, best rates, longest payback period. Boys, I get through. Plus, I could dance again. <laughs> Lenders Jewelry and Pawn Shop Mines Educational Institute Offering preschool, nursery and primary levels Finally a school that is every parent's dream Located at 69 Crow Street Offering academic excellence Trained qualified teachers Small class sizes Personalized gear And one-to-one -one attention for your little ones At Smart Minds Register for full-time or evening classes Daily practice pass exam papers For proficiency at the grade 2, 4 and 6 assessment And CXE exam preparedness or join our Becca Phonics reading and writing program. So if your child is for preschool, nursery, or primary level, come to Smart Mind, located at 69 Old Street, or call 231-4885 or 600-9229 to enroll now. Furnishing your home or office has never been easier. Here at Kisum's, our inventory of locally made and imported furniture, offered at amazing prices, will leave you wanting more. From vinyl, floor rugs and carpets, bedroom, dining and living room sets, mattresses, pillows, office desks, chairs and filing cabinets, outdoor benches and tables, we have a piece of furniture for every room imaginable in your home or office. Check out our flagship store at Industrial Site Rheinveld or one of our branches in New Amsterdam, Port Morant, Cliverton and Camp Street. Kisoon's Furniture, furnishing homes for over 50 years. Modern Optical Services, 316 Mill Street, Georgetown, telephone 226-1082. Welcome back. Ghana is gearing up for its fourth Energy Conference and Supply Chain Expo, scheduled to take place from February 18th to 21st, 2025, at the Ghana Marriott Hotel. The event, theme Connecting the Dots, Integrating the Future, is expected to attract around 7,000 delegates and showcase over 180 booths with more than 70 speakers. The innovative digital experience will be introduced through the Energy Conference Suite with a dedicated app and website for enhanced engagement. Minister of Natural Resources Vikram Bharat emphasized that the event is not only about energy, but also about integrating various sectors of the economy, thanks to the local content legislation. We have a conference that will highlight opportunities across all sectors. So again, it shows that we are committed to diversifying our economy and not only to focus on one particular sector. And this is something I think Guyana as a new oil producing country, that we are becoming a role model among new countries, new oil producing countries around the world. It is because we have not remained focused on one single sector only. 
but rather we have continued to grow and incentivize and to expand all the sectors. That today when we, when we launch our energy conference, it is not only an energy conference, but is a supply chain expo. The conference will cover topics such as sustainable development, workforce development, women in energy, and technical sessions on renewable energy and AI applications. Staying with current events, Ghana's oil and gas industry has seen a significant boost expanding by 67.1% in the first half of 2024, with an expected growth of 56.4% for the entire year. This growth is mainly due to increased oil production, which reached 113.5 million barrels by June, up from 68.7 million barrels in the same period last year. The surge is primarily driven by the Prosperity FPSO, which started operating in November of 2023. Daily oil production in the Starbuck block averaged 624,000 barrels per day compared to the 380,000 barrels per day last year. The government also granted a new license to ExxonMobil for the Whiptail project, which is expected to start producing oil by 2027 or 2028. Additional projects like Yellowtail and Arua are on track for future production, and the Environmental Protection Agency is reviewing another potential project at the Hammerhead field. Don't go away after the break. Biden joins Harris at the first joint election campaign stop since leaving race and South Korea U.S. drill exercises come amid peninsular tensions. Minds Educational Institute, offering preschool, nursery, and primary levels. Finally, a school that is every parent's dream. Located at 69 Crow Street, offering academic excellence, trained, qualified teachers, small class sizes, personalized gear, and one-to-one -one attention for your little ones. At Smart Minds, register for full-time or evening classes, daily practice pass exam papers for proficiency at the grade 2, 4, and 6 assessment, and CXE exam preparedness. Or join our Becca Phonics reading and and writing program. So if your child is for preschool, nursery, or primary level, come to Smart Mind located at 69 Old Street or call 231 4885 or 600 9229 to enroll now. Good, good girl, forget things. Oh, Who's the problem, Granny? I want money for bar for those swords. I was dancing and I fall and fracture my hip. If you need some quick money, you should check Lenders Jewelry and Pawn Shop. Lenders Jewelry and Pawn Shop, lot 238 South Road, Border, Georgetown. Get jewelry made to order in just 72 hours. We also accept vehicles. Lenders, best rates, longest payback period. Boys, I get through. Plus, I could dance again. <laughs> Lenders Jewelry and Pawn Shop. Furnishing your home or office has never been easier. Here at Kisum's, our inventory of locally made and imported furniture, offered at amazing prices, will leave you wanting more. From vinyl, floor rugs, and carpets, bedroom, dining, and living room sets, mattresses, pillows, office desks, chairs, and filing cabinets, outdoor benches, and tables, we have a piece of furniture for every room imaginable in your home or office. Check out our flagship store at Industrial Site Rheinfeld or one of our branches in New Amsterdam, Port Morant, Caliverton, and Camp Street. Kisoon's Furniture, furnishing homes for over 50 years. Welcome back. Now we take a look at what's happening in the region and around the world. United States President Joe Biden has appeared at a campaign event with Vice President and Democratic nominee Kamala Harris for the first time since dropping out of the presidential race. The pair spoke at a rally in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, on Monday to mark the Labor Day holiday. They hope to shore up support from unions and blue-collar workers, as Jazeera's Phil Lavelle reports. 
Yeah. If you're looking for division in America, we've been there. Yeah. Head to Pennsylvania. Kamala Harris did exactly that on Monday, the Labor Day holiday, signaling her ninth visit this year. The president. The middle class built America, and unions built the middle class. And the presidential candidate. We are fighting to build an economy that works for all working people. United behind unions and trying to clinch every worker's vote in this working class must win state. Be they for Harris. Lots of people just turn up with t-shirts on. You've actually brought no, a picture. That's right, because this is what it's about. Okay, we're gonna get this together. We're gonna get it right this time, right? Let's get it right. Or be they for Trump. Once you hear the truth on subjects that you don't even know anything about, it blows your mind. And it's an easy peasy answer to it. Pennsylvania has the highest sway of all battleground states. It is the middle class workers here that could determine this election. This event is much smaller than those we've seen recently. There's no stadium filled with thousands of people. I mean, this venue will only hold a few hundred at most. Even outside, it feels like there are more security than there are spectators. We are talking triple figures here, not thousands lined up. And that is a very deliberate strategy by the campaign. They want these events to feel local, but they are talking directly to voters in states where just a few thousand votes either way could really swing it. What is it you think that she needs to do to win Pennsylvania? Because it's going to be tight. Unions. Unions are big, and I think she got the union support. She'll be hoping for more, at least after this. U.S. Steel should remain American-owned and American-operated. And I will always have the back of America's steel workers. Finally weighing in on a Japanese takeover attempt of U.S. Steel. Blasted by Biden and Trump, one issue they agree on, now her too. Keeping jobs in Pennsylvania will be a major issue for both campaigns. As for their job... She's just going to offer so much more to this country than um, the other. And uh, what's happening on the other side is just unbelievable. They know what that is, and they'll be working at it through to November's election. Phil Lavelle, Al Jazeera, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Internationally, heavy rains and floods continue to batter several parts of Sudan as 16 months of fighting limits the government's ability to respond. At least 177 people have lost their lives since the start of the rainy season in June, and more than 100,000 have been displaced. Al Jazeera's Habib Morgan reports. This is what remains of Osli village in Merawi in Sudan's northern state. Homes reduced to rubble and debris due to heavy rains and floods. 65-year-old Asha Mohammed shows us what remains of the home she's lived in all her life. She says the rains and floods this year is unlike any she's seen in her lifetime. We lost everything in the house. The rooms are gone, the bathrooms, everything. We left the house with only the clothes on our backs. It's the first time in my life that I've seen torrential floods like this. Everything has been carried away. The only way to move around parts of the village is on tractors due to the high water levels. The locality is one of several in northern state affected by this year's rains and floods that has so far killed more than 170 people and injured hundreds others. The damages here are just a fraction of the devastation caused by the rains and floods. More than 50,000 homes in several villages have either been damaged or destroyed since June when the rains began. Many families who were already struggling are now displaced once again as the humanitarian situation gets worse. Sudan is already going through a crisis as a result of fighting between the army and the paramilitary rapid support forces that's led to the displacement of more than 11 million people. The rains and floods have left many in need of assistance. We don't have medicine. There's a Red Crescent tent here, but very few get medications. There's an eye infection going around, so we need medicine. We also need bedding and there are no tents. People here are really suffering. And some are concerned about the future. We need engineers to let us know. If we rebuild and more floods come in the future, will we be able to stay in Osli without damage or loss of life? Because if the area is no longer habitable, we need to find other solutions. The government needs to help us find solutions. For now, many say all they need is assistance to help them cope with their losses. 
and keep them alive until they can rebuild their lives. Hiba Morgan Al Jazeera, Osley, Northern State. Finally, South Korea and the United States are taking part in large-scale military exercises in the city of Pyongyang this week. The drills rehearsed a coordinated strike on air, sea and land as tensions remain high between North and South Korea. Al Jazeera's Eunice Kim reports. From sea to air, a show of force to overwhelm the enemy. Dozens of amphibious combat vessels emerge in a campaign meant to shock and awe after F-35B fighters and attack helicopters paved the way for the beachside surprise assault. The defense of the Korean Peninsula depends on our ROC and U.S. forces continuously working together shoulder to shoulder, including during this and future Sang Young exercises. The Sangyong, or Double Dragon Drills, are a showcase of the U.S.-South Korea alliance, upgraded with each joint drill in the complexity of its capabilities and processes. Like the Normandy landing in the Second World War, an amphibious assault was pivotal in reversing the fate of the Korean War some 74 years ago. What's changed in today's drill? A combined U.S.-South Korea command at sea. With Seoul's regional partners going through leadership transitions this year, President Yoon suk yeol has underlined that President Joe Biden and Japanese Prime Minister Fumio Kishida's upcoming exits will not weaken their partnership. The Camp David trilateral cooperation framework with South Korea, the U.S. and Japan is of great importance, not only for the Indo-Pacific region and global economic security, but also for the mutual benefit of the three countries. As the summertime drills are in full swing across the border, North Korea unveiled what it called suicide drones and deployed hundreds of new tactical ballistic missile launchers to the border, according to its state media. Kim Jong-un reiterated his commitment to realizing what he calls an enhanced nuclear force, troops on both sides preparing for a contingency with no working communication channel between them to dial down the temperature. Eunice Kim, Al Jazeera, Pohang, South Korea. This brings us to the end of the regional and global news coverage. Up next is the 3D weather forecast. And that's it to be two headline news for this Tuesday evening. As we take our leave, we invite you to follow us on Facebook and YouTube. You can tune in tomorrow at 6.30 a.m. for rebroadcast and at 7 p.m. for more news. Until then, please take care of yourself and each other. <laughs>